Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the worst fucking podcast you've ever heard. Bo. Mike's. All right, all right, all right. I like when that lady drops the F bomb. It makes me feel complete. <laughs> okay, you know did I, I miss mean? something? Yeah, yeah, the lady on the intro, she goes, oh. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the worst fucking podcast you've ever heard, both mics. And oh, I, I feel awesome. complete. And ho, I, ho, I, ho, I, motherfuckers. If you're on a I video or should... seeing a video, here I am, Santa Claus, come get me, bitches. Uh, uh, Michael, you have you have two hats on. Yes, I often do. I'm multitasking. Yes, I hear you. All right, All so right. here's the deal. Last year, the first time, I thought I was going to do a couple Santa Claus visits, do some good things. What I found was, was yes. that there was a big need, both for my bank account and for the services of virtual Santas, online visits and stuff. Oh, wow. So yeah, there's a couple people really... that I talked to. I went with the company I thought had the best product, and I'm getting paid the best money out of all the companies, too. So it's a, it's a good deal all the way around. So, yes... The real beard is what pays for Santa Claus. If you have the real beard, you're getting all yes. the money. Yes. So, with that in mind, for like, you know, minimal amount of money, I go downtown here in my town to the uh, place that normally dyes women's hairs, and they dye mine. And they do my yeah. eyebrows, too. So, it looks looks pretty cool, don't it? No? All right, oh, whatever. yeah. You know, a little, a little washed out, but that's to be expected because uh, of the lighting is made for someone with darker hair yeah but, yeah, yeah that's good. what it is actually i'm it catching up to you i got more gray hair now than you do uh, <laughs> nice nice <laughs> <sighs> oh welcome to episode welcome to both mics yeah welcome to both mics a show about nothing and everything show number 72 that is mike Sofka. and that is mike taylor sorry i took a week off i was confused there you go right? that's mike taylor and together we are both mics. Both mics, yes. Welcome to show number seventy-two of both mics heard everywhere. Podcasts can be heard with or without Santa. Uh, yes. Episode seventy-two brought to you by Twitch.tv slash both mics. Yes. We get online about seven-ish on a Friday night, and we finish up around nine-ish on a Friday night. Yes. Uh, so, we got a pee yeah. break yeah. halfway in the middle there because we're old. Yeah, yeah, because we're old. Get off our lawn. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> And uh, and uh, tell your friends, tell someone, tell share, like, subscribe, share, like, subscribe, yes. repeat, rinse, lather, repeat. You can find us everywhere too. So anywhere yeah. you anywhere. go to find stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Sure. If you're watching yep. the video, there's a list of those places up there. I'm gonna pull that down right away though. Right. All right. I went to. The reason why we didn't have a show last week was I was in uh, Rockville in Daytona Beach, and it just was not going to work out for a show. So, right, right, right. Uh, Even though Rockville is in Illinois, the Rockville Concert Festival is in Florida. Are you sure it's not Rockford? In oh, Illinois? maybe I'm thinking Rockford. Yeah. Yes, oh, that's where Chief okay. Yes, yes, Rockford. Yeah, I was confused. Well, they actually call this Welcome to Rockville is the full title. But it sounds cumbersome and clunky when the band's up there. All right, it's a pleasure to be here at Welcome to Rockville. Okay, right? say Rockville, yeah. D. Just, yeah. But this... So, I, so anything, anything strange happen? Buddy, I, I got yeah. a whole show's worth over here if I wanted to. We're going to see how far we get. Let's let's go. I I heard that Rat was there. No, and they and they played "You're in Love." No, but you're close. So I'm gonna get to that in a minute. I got video of that, and I got the fucking. I was there, so (laughs) I'll just leave it at that for now until we get to it here. But they did, um, just to kind of give you an idea of the bands that I saw. Right, I was just gonna say, list out the bands. Yeah. There was a bunch of bands there, but I'm not going to list all the bands out. I'm just going to list the ones that I saw. So I'm pulling them up on my uh, uh, Google machine here. Hang on. All right. So on Thursday, first band I see when I walk in, I, I, I kind of get in the oh, lay of the hold land. On. Let's hey. back up a little bit. Yeah. So, you, so you, you got there on Thursday? No, I got there Wednesday night. Checked in. Wednesday the- night. So you, you checked in. You had accommodations for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, Sunday night, or did you come home on no, Sunday? Sunday, and then checked out on Monday. So it was like five wow. days away. Beachside, beachside, beach beach side. oceanside. They took my nice, fucking nice hotel. Off. Does it yeah. matter? 
No, it was nice. It was a Hampton Inn, but it was nice. You know, free breakfast right on Daytona Beach. You could see the ocean from the room and all that crap. So, pfft. I'm good. When? 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 At 8 in the morning when you left or 11 o'clock when you came back? No, we didn't leave at 8 in the morning. We were leisurely. The first day we got there at about 2, 2.30 or so. And then okay. each day we okay. got there around between 12 and 3. Because, you know, there were some bands we missed out on, but they weren't high-level shit I had to see, you know? So. Right. Anyway, all right, so here's the bands. I walk in, and we walk out, get the lay of the place, get our shit together, and... Um, now, it was, hold it back up. Okay. Wait, wait, was that, is that inter, uh, Daytona International Speedway? Yes, yes, thank okay. you for adding that. Yes, it was at the I'm Speedway. Guessing, I'm guessing it was on the infield. All on the infield, that is correct, right? sir. Yep. Was it where, like, they normally do their concerts for, like, the Daytona 500, or was it, like, a more infield? Well, there were four like, or five stages, so they was kind of spread okay. out different ways with the biggest... Okay, so they, they didn't use the grandstands as seating. No, no, not at okay. all. Okay, not okay at all. cool. But I'm two, trying to picture it here. The two largest stages, if you were sitting in a grandstand across from the pits... The two largest stages would have been to the extreme left end and the extreme right end, and then oh, a couple a of stages walk. peppered in. That's that's like a quarter mile walk right there. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, I, being I'm having trouble with that getting around type thing, I I took advantage of an opportunity there. I'll get into that later. But um, anyway, did you, I, did you do general admission? No, VIP, we did VIP. super VIP. No, we did VIP. Didn't do su- there was no super VIP at this event. But okay. we've done VIP. We've done it. That's the only way I can go to shows like this, man. All right. And, and the VIP gets you better seating. It gets you seating. There is no seating. So it gets you seating. Oh, uh, seating? Then, how about, like, private bathrooms? Is oh, there a yeah. VIP tent? We, we get the good bathrooms. We don't have – in VIP, you don't have the regular porta potty There's a couple porta potties there just in case. But there's, like – in, in each trailer. VIP area, there were, like, trailers. There had to be 10 or 12 trailers with the male and female in them. And, it, you know, it was right. nicer. You conditioned know. and all that. Oh cool. yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. You're not sitting on someone else's pee as much. No, not as much. Yeah. <laughs> as much. Cool. Um, how, how about like hospitality tent, food, drink? Uh, no food or drink included in this one. An Earth Day birthday in Orlando, it's included dinner and lunch and soft drinks and water, but none of that is included at this one. And I knew what I, I've been to this type of event before. And as long as you know ahead of time that you're going to get your face ripped off on food and drink, you're right. okay because your expectations have changed. It's yeah. not ruining your event because you're all pissed off because everything's so right. expensive. Because you, you brought 20 bucks and that's going to get you two bottles of water for the day. Yeah, yeah, not so much. <laughs> Thank God I quit drinking. Jesus, that would friggin'. I mean, yeah, yeah that's just bad. The beers are, you know, 10 bucks or 12 bucks or whatever. And then. Women drinks are 15 or 20 bucks, depending on how they bump you. And then, uh, anyway, it's full alcohol, full beer, all that shit everywhere. Well, good food. I'll talk about that later. But um, the first band I saw was a band called Teenage Wrist, like your wrist. And they were okay, I guess. Nothing memorable. Then I saw Spirit Box, which was a band I had heard a bunch of buzz about. And that's where I met up with Mosh Pit Jesus, and I did my interview with Mosh Pit <laughs> Jesus, who has 3,000 okay. followers, yeah, on his Facebook page. So 3,000 followers? 3,000, yeah, which is not bad. You know, local guy does the shows. It's gone up. Hmm? I said, I wonder if it's gone up since, uh, since the event, you well, know? It, it may have. It's going to go up after I release our interview. I, I haven't edited that yet. I need to edit it down a little bit, but... Um, you know, he yeah. was a real cool guy. He was real, you know, it was Jesus. You know, I asked him some good questions like, you know, is your favorite band Godsmack? Do you like <laughs> Do you like the song Stairway to Heaven? Are you offended <laughs> when they throw up the devil horns? Um, right. You know, that's how that interview went, and it was really uh, good. Cool. So yeah, that's cool. be sure to check out the Both Mike's page soon and the What's Hot in Florida pages for the uh, mosh pit jesus interview band that blew me away on thursday dorothy that's the Dor- name. dorothy and i had heard them one time before like on xm or something like that flipping around and it's a chick lead singer but she has that thing it, that stage presence you know how there's like a handful of performers that have that stage yeah. presence right, she right, had it. right the band was tight the music was good Go check out some Dorothy. That that the lead singer from Hallstrom is like that. 
Yeah, exactly. Very exactly. Jake, what's her name? Lizzie Hale. Yeah. Yeah. I got a picture with her way back in the day. Then I was ready to bring that picture to another event and have her sign it. Because if you do stuff like, you know, yep, sometimes you we can do work it. that out. And um, the, the event got canceled. I think it was her birthday, birthday last year or something. But anyway. Right. Usually the artist, if I get a picture with somebody and I go back and see them again and try to get them to autograph that picture, usually they're like, oh, man, where'd you get this? Holy crap, I look skinny. They get enjoyment out of it. You know, oh, look, I look skinnier yeah. there, you know, and shit like that. We did, we did that with Jack Russell, the uh, the lead singer from Great White, the uh, the original Great White. We saw him New Year's Eve in San Antonio uh, one year, God, probably 2013. And then we saw him just before the Monsters of Rock Cruise in L.A. at the Whiskey A Go Go on in sun, on Sunset in Hollywood. Yeah. And <laughs> at the New Year's Eve show, Brenda was like right in front, and she had her camera, and he kind of got on top of the camera. Went. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've seen it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, she got she worked her way to the front at uh, the Whiskey A Go Go, and she held up a pen and a picture. And uh, he looked at the picture and he started laughing. Yeah. And he, he autographed the 8x10. And He's got to autograph that. Yeah, there's no yeah. way. Yeah. Yep. yeah. We so, had a frame somewhere. So the next band I saw was called Grandson. Like your grandson. Grandson? Grandson, all one word. Like grandpa's grand, grandpa's little friends there, grandson. They were pretty good. They, again, yeah. nothing that totally blew me away, but... They were a band, and I was happy I stopped to see. Now, STP, Stone Temple Pilots, was supposed yeah. to be there. But the uh, week of Rockville, somebody in their organization, is what they said, has tested positive for COVID, and apparently it was something they couldn't get past. So they canceled, yep. which was disappointing because they got a new album out and everything. So but, Wow. Wow. Anyway. And um, I'm guessing the, the new lead singer, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I've seen him since the new lead singer, and the guy, the guy's trying to make it his own. He's not. Uh, I don't. His name escapes me right now, but he's not trying to do a Scott Weiland. But he's still okay. trying to keep the style of a STP. But he's making it his own, which I was. I, it was good to see when I saw them a couple years ago. So. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Cool kill. So then, you got to understand a lot of these bigger names bands are on one extreme end and then the other and you got to go like a back and forth type thing through those main stages and then maybe you stumble across somebody you like or somebody you've heard of on a smaller stage and you could hit that in between but being right. i had the vip and i had ada seating yes i had that seating so they had like a little riser with a bunch of people because you know mike don't get around so good at his old age so he had that yeah. available to him when he needed it so that came into play that was good it was good find you're gonna have to bring Rudolph with you to help you. Yeah, right. Well, I did see Santa. I, I saw more than one Jesus at the. I, I'm gonna get to that. I have pictures of all this shit. I'm gonna put up here in a second. But um, so Cypress Hill. The wife wants to go see Cypress Hill rather than uh, I think Anthrax. So <laughs> yeah, a good choice. So because she, she doesn't like all the bands that go, you know, in the microphone right. and shit. So, right. So we go see Cypress Hill, and of course, you know, you're in Daytona. People from Jacksonville have been coming to this event for years. So there is, you know, a lot of sun, sunburn necks, you know what I mean, at this thing. You know they're, you know, uh, I don't know, even though there's, there was no, there was no racial divide there. People were people, people were dressed up. Everybody had a great time. The event was freaking great. There were, I didn't see any fights or arrests or anything like that or any problems. So That's surprising. It was Four days. Disney clean in this motherfucker. Disney clean. You couldn't find shit on the floor. Now, That's good. after the in front of the two main stages, after the last band you could see shit on the floor there, you know, because people were like, right. fuck it, I'm not going all the way to trash can, I'm dropping it here. But pretty much, they did a great job of keeping it clean. I was impressed with that. Right. So, yeah, Cypress Hill, then we shot back for A Day to Remember, which you may not know, but I've heard a couple of their songs in the past. They were pretty good. And then we finished tonight with your favorite band, Mike, Slipknot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one of the members of Slipknot had some sort of severe medical issue and he was una unable to make part of the tour but they have like nine guys all playing the drums in this band so it's different i don't get it like you got a band with four people that's enough you know now you got to split the pot nine ways 
Well, I think this was sort of a, a goof, and they usually... They dressed up in orange jumpsuits before they've dressed up in white and red jumpsuits and they all have like a number like number eight number six number seven number nine okay. Corey I Taylor was the lead singer who's also lead singer of a band called I think Stone Sour and also does his own stuff he's the lead singer now they all wear masks like right yes weird mask and shit so yeah that's I think they thought it was maybe a gimmick type thing and they weren't sure it would last long and it took off so <laughs> right. So Friday, I go see a guy named Aaron Jones. That guy was good. Look up Aaron Jones. It's A Y R O N Jones. Aaron Jones. Mm. I saw a band called Ice Nine Kills, which I could take or leave. Um, Beartooth, who I was sorry I missed twice in the past. I saw them, and now I'm sorry that I saw them this time. <laughs> Pennywise was a heavy band that I liked. Then I saw Chevelle. They were really good. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know that name. And then I saw Rob Zombie. He has a whole theatrical thing going, and it was right. really good. He has that presence. He has that command on stage like I was talking about before. Let's see. Then we saw Metallica. Metallica played two sets in this event, one on Friday night and a completely oh. different set on Sunday night. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was, it was great. So Saturday comes, and we're off to a, mu a little bit later start because we're just we're getting worn out already, you know. But uh, we saw Dead Poet Society, who were pretty good. Sick Puppies, who I like. I saw them. They were good. Atreyu, A-T-R-E-Y-U. They were pretty good. I've seen them in the past. They're from Orlando, I think. Really? Okay. Um, a band called Fever 333 were pretty good. They were pretty strong. Um band called Bad Flower. I don't know if you're familiar with them. I've seen them a couple times. It's basically an emo blonde dude with a heavy metal band behind him. Um, Interesting. Yeah, no, they, they put out some good songs. They have some. They have, they have a catalog of stuff you may or may not have heard. Asking Alexandria, another band I've heard of on and off, and I had the pleasure of seeing them this time. They were good. I've heard of them. Stained. Saw them again for about the hundredth time. Not hundredth time, but I mean over the 20 years or so that I've been familiar with them 22 years yeah i probably know like a song or two right yeah and their lead singer uh aaron lewis is on his own he's become like a country oh, star okay. yeah if and, uh if you actually get a chance look up uh aaron lewis afraid on the uh the nashville outlaws motley crew cd it's a compilation oh, okay. and uh listen to the motley crew version of afraid and then listen to his version All of right. afraid and it is it, it is bizarrely completely different and awesome, right? So I, points and, for and, and by the way, we it, it, with your permission, I'll talk to you about this later off the air. Here, we may just fill up this show with the rest of Rockville and maybe do a third hour tonight if that works. I don't know if that works or not because I got three shows worth of shit here. Right, I hear we'll, you. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah, figure we, it out. We just keep going. And then followed up to stained with the Offspring. I'm oh, sure you, really? Sure you've heard of The Offspring, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. They remind me of a more contemporary punk rock cheap trick with their lyrics and their the rhythm, the, uh, uh, what do they call it? Not over-modulated, the over, uh, whatever, with the guitars. They they seem to have that in common with cheap trick. Like, they're, I, I don't know, it's a more current version of cheap trick, if you ask me. I get them in Everclear confused a little bit. Oh, do you? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, maybe it's just because of the lead singer is a, a really, really blonde guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and know, you were out. A, that dude's a medical doctor. He <clears> went to Dexter? school. Yeah, became a doctor. And then yeah. he was doing the band thing, and he was like, fuck it, I'm going to go with this band thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know he was like valedictorian of his high school. And I was like, all right, <laughs> that's kind of bizarre. <laughs> yeah. It, it's hey, a business decision. It, it takes a smart guy to run a band and be successful. So, yeah. you know, yeah, I'm with it. And then we ended the night with Disturbed. Disturbed ah. is a good band. I've seen them before. Yeah. They got robbed in uh, 2016 for the Grammy for their, uh, was it uh, the Something of Silence? The Sound of Silence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That great dude song, sings that. Great video. Yeah, yeah, great. yeah. yeah. Incredible singer, un yeah. unbelievable singer. The, no, the, you're right. the pipes in that guy are are unbelievable. So I'm guessing they played that song. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah he does that. That was, that was awesome. And then he has um, 
I guess, I don't know if it was him or someone close to him that struggled with mental problems, addiction, uh, suicide, suicidal thoughts, dark areas of your brain, I guess. So they always talk about that in the show. And it's kind of a bummer when you see him. It's kind of like bringing it down, but he pulls it all together real nice. You right. Know? right. So Sunday comes, we get a late start again, which was okay. I mean, we didn't miss much, but I did see a band called Sleeping With Sirens that I thought was good. Sleeping with, I've heard of them. Then I saw a band called Dance Gavin Dance. Really? Heavy metal. Oh, I was God, thinking yeah. it was going to be upbeat, like rock or whatever. Now, I had heard one of their songs on XM before, and it didn't sound all that. But <laughs> it ended up being mostly. So When, when I uh, moved to San Antonio in 2010, I... Uh, I had to pick up a, a job real quick, so I got a job waiting tables, and uh, all, all the guys that worked there were like a lot younger, like my sure. like uh, Trey's and, and my Michael's age. Yeah, and uh, they were all into that type of music. Yeah, and you know, I, I asked them one day. I go, you know, my mom and dad always said that the music I listened to, the hair metal of the '80s and the hard rock of the '80s, all sounded alike, and they couldn't tell one from the other. It all sounded the same. I go, in turn, I listen to this death metal, whatever you want to call it, speed yeah. metal. I go, I listen to it, and all of that sounds the same. Now, when you listen to it, is it distinct? Like, do you, can you determine or distinct, sure distinguish can. one singer from another, sure. even though they sound exactly the same? Yeah. He goes, oh, yeah, it, it's, it's all completely different. Yeah. One, you know, and I'm like, ah, ah, ah. No, 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 and you're absolutely right. There's an episode of South Park like this where one of the kids – starts to outgrow everything everybody else is listening to and they they do it in the cartoon where when he listens to the same songs everybody else likes it sounds like somebody having diarrhea in a bowl like, <laughs> you know and it's he's like i don't know what happened all of a sudden everything sounds like shit <laughs> <laughs> and the yeah. whole episode's that with the parents thinking that and everything else is great yep it's so. a, a total total get off my lawn situation yeah. there so then I saw another band who I've heard of before who I like listening to their stuff on the radio anyway. Falling in Reverse. Thought they were really solid. Thought they put they put on a good show. Thought they were good. Uh, then we saw Mudvayne. 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 Wow. We did see Mudvayne. Um, we, we did end up seeing a little bit of Anthrax, I think, I, I now that I think about it. Because we ended up leaving one end and going to... Anyway, Mudvayne is a band that was completely broken up about two, three years ago. They were broken up oh, for wow. a couple years. And back like in 99, 2000, they put out a song called Does It Make You Happy? And it's got a heavy feel to it, but more like a stained feel or something like that. Not a... <laughs> feel. <laughs> well, everything else in that band was a... <laughs> But they were interesting. They had great makeup. They had great theatrics. They were into the music. They, the lead singer was extremely passionate, had that presence on stage again. So it was good to see them back together. Then we closed out the night Sunday night with the second full set of Metallica, completely different than the Friday night set, which was, which was really cool. So anyway. All right. So I'm going to get right to it. Okay. Let me uh, pull this up. So, here. Did, did overall did you did you have a pisser of a time? It, let me tell you about. It. I was not pissed <laughs> off or pissed on. Let me just leave it at that. So, <laughs> no, I, I was wondering. I, I couldn't see very very well with the video that was there. Oh, I got I, better video. I couldn't determine if it was if it was or was not you. Oh, I got better video showing up here in a minute. I've got a video. It's okay. not my personal video. I stole it because here's what happened. We were, we were halfway between stages, and they were like on a third stage called the Rockvillian stage. That was like the third biggest stage, if you would, there. They had a yeah. Twitch stage, which was a small stage, and then they had some sort of other stage. Those were like local bands and regional <laughs> bands or whatever. But on the uh, Rockvillian stage, which was like halfway between both ends, we were stopping on our way to go to the other end to get something to eat to carry with us to go get check right. out this other band. And I keep hearing Rage Against the Machine, but it sounds a little bit different. Okay. And I look at my thing on my phone, because everything's digital. They no longer have stuff posted and paper stuff. You know, everything's on your phone with who's playing when and where and all that <laughs> stuff. So I'm looking at that, and it's a band called Brass Against. And I'm like, wow, I've heard these guys. I've seen them on YouTube before. 
bunch of guys playing brass instruments like in a marching band, but they're playing all the Rage Against the Machine stuff, and it sounds fucking great. They have this chick lead singer who blows my mind. Come to find out, she used to be on The Voice years ago and got booted off right away. Um, but she's really brought this band with her passion, with her looks, with the way she moves on stage. Her straight stage presence, which I'll talk about again, <clears throat> was dynamic. So, I thought she. I heard she pissed off the judges at the Voice. Yes, I bet. I bet. I heard that. Yeah. Well, after this event, but it's also a band from New York. Just to, what, to kind of throw off? it out there. Yeah. No, not pissed off, but uh, Brass Against. Oh, really? Yeah, they're from New York. I, I, see, I, I actually didn't know thought that. they were they were like a, a protest band. I'm like, okay, yeah. Brass. Like usually, you know, the top Brass. Right. So. So, Actually, I just hearing the name, that's what I thought. So we're stopping to get something to eat, and a guy bumps into me, and he's saying something to his girlfriend as they're rushing to the Rock Villain stage to see Brass Against. He goes, oh, my God, pissing on a dude, or something like that. And I'm like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Then 10, 15 seconds later, I hear the lead singer of Brass Against, Sophia Arista, say, oh, don't worry, I'm going to piss in that motherfucker's mouth. Don't worry. To the crowd, that's what she's saying in the middle of the song. <laughs> so I'm like, wait a second, this guy just ran by me talking about somebody pissing on somebody. She comments that I'm gonna piss on that guy, don't worry, I'm gonna piss in his mouth or whatever. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I, I said to Lisa, I said, did you hear that? And we, we start talking about it. And I'm like, look, not for nothing, I could watch this, but I'd probably rather not. So let's just go see the other band. So we didn't <laughs> watch it. Okay, we didn't see it live. But the next day, when it was yeah. blowing up YouTube, the internet, everything else, you couldn't help but see and hear it. I mean, it was everywhere. Yep. So, yep. with that I in mind... Here's, I saw the New York Post Here's her posted the video. Yeah, here's her picture on the left there. If you're looking at us on twitch.tv slash both mics, or on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or wherever, thank you for watching. But if you're listening, you might want to go check this out, because I'm going to have a video of this. Of what you may have missed. And she's a good looking woman. She, she just is. She's, she's got everything that says she's a female rock star. She's got a body. She's got a face. She's got a voice. She's got everything. And then on the right side of this is actual still shot from the, uh, from the video where it's digitally pixel pixelated. But you can still see the stream coming down. You can see the trumpet that's up her butt. Yes, exactly. Wait, no, that's not upper butt? That's so, not what this is about? I'm not sure if the... I'm pretty sure the audio is going to come through on this video. So let's just keep quiet and watch this. I got the entire piss incident that I'm going to play video-wise for you right now. And there may be some audio. So stand by. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so hopefully you saw that. Hopefully you're able to hear that. Now, it was some of it was a fish tank. Dude, it looked like she drank a gallon of water before she went on stage. She flooded that dude. And then you know what the dude does? He gets up and he does like a Triple H to wrestler thing. He like sprays the crowd with the piss that's in his mouth. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus, this is off the chain. And wow. then, then I heard the next day that, you know, she pissed off some people in the band. So they're going to they're gonna get a new lead singer, R. Kelly. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. I've been here all week. Thank you. Thank you. Try to be old. Anyway, so what's your take on this, Mike? From the outside looking in, would you have stopped and watched this? If you knew it was coming, would you have stopped and watched it? I probably would have. Yeah, we, we, well, just out of curiosity. And then, like, yeah, after, would have regretted it, you know, with the, the, the images imprinted in my brain for my, the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'm really not. I'm, I think I'm glad with the choices I made. I, I'm not a prude. I mean, I, do whatever the fuck you want. But anyway. Yeah. It, I was I was shocked that, that someone actually did it, you know. Un unbelievable that 
that somebody had the gall well, and I, the gumption. Well, I mean, we've heard that. Either side, him or her. Yeah, well, we've heard, you know, and I think it was a plant. I think they, this was set up ahead of time because what do we say? What have we always said? I don't give a shit if it's bad publicity or not. Just spell my fucking name right. Right, exactly. I bet you, I bet you all their YouTube hits are up, all their... Google searches are flying through the roof on Brass Against Pissing on Stage. Sophia Eurisa. It's fake. Yeah, right? So listen, I got about a hand, uh, more than a handful. I did a People of Rockville thing. Because okay. let's face it, when you're going to an event like this, a festival type event, people are ultimate dressed up. What's that? The ultimate in people watching. Oh, yeah. People are dressed up and they want to take your, they want their picture taken. They want you to take exactly. a picture with them. And some right. of them are way the fuck out there. So I got some pictures that I'm going to show here that are... It's like my slideshow from my vacation. Here, you got to watch my slideshow. <laughs> All right. So did, you, did you get anybody's Instagram or anything to, to tag them? I don't know. I'm just now getting yep. around to this yep. shit. Took me a couple days to recover. Anyway, here we go. Here's picture number one. This guy driving a fucking tank. What the it hell? It was like a scooter, but it was like, like a Johnny tank. Five? I, I guess it's an all-terrain vehicle. It had actual, like, the rubber or metal yeah, tank. It looks like, like Johnny Five for short circuit. <clears throat> okay, well, there you go. That's what it was. <laughs> That's what it was. How about this cat? This cat, you look closely. He's got a beer bottle attached to his forehead. They were in okay. VIP, and we're sitting there, and I see this guy get up, and the other members of his party get up from their seat, and they're going to trash their shit and go watch a band or something. And the other two drop their trash, and this guy licks the back of the beer bottle and sticks it on his head and starts walking around with it on his head. So, again, it takes all types. Looks like Mike Busey, but not. Yeah, no, it very well could have been. He is, and Mike, Mike's put on some pounds, right, over there at the sausage yeah. house. <laughs> Castle. Castle, yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife has yeah. been there, by the way. My wife, in her part-time gig doing that Amazon thing, she had to take a picture. She had to take a, a delivery from Amazon to the Sausage Castle. My daughter's been there <clears throat> with Machine Gun Kelly and some other guy, Rook or Nook or something. He did like know. a music video. Yeah, she was there after the the, the 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 Machine Gun Kelly show in Orlando, I guess years ago when she followed. MGK on tour. Well, the last time I saw the Sausage Castle or 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 Mike Busey or anything was on TV. Uh, some Asian guy has like a cooking show and he travels around the world and he sees interesting people and they talk about food and stuff. And apparently they booked to go to the Sausage Castle. And okay. Mike Busey, knowing this guy's Asian, arranged for a bunch of Asian chicks to show up and shit and dance and all this shit. And, you know, and scantily clad. And then he's telling... Right the cameraman which shots to take and how to take shots of this big 400 pound guy that's going to pick up his belly and underneath his belly is his ar-15 and he picks it up and starts shooting it um <laughs> so he's telling him and then he's telling him hold on i'm going to get these girls to chinese this up a bit and he's like give me some of that chingy changy chong chong and the guy's looking at him like are you fucking serious <laughs> and he got real mad and left the dude left the dude's crib really yeah, and I was like, holy shit. I can't believe that was such a racist fucking thing. It was funny as hell. Don't get me wrong. I thought it was funny, but right. I could see how if I was an Asian person, I might have been offended by that. So, yeah, whatever. I, I don't know imagine. what happened to me. I have feelings. I don't know. All right. <laughs> so here's another one. Here's me and a couple dudes from Slipknot. Not really. They're dressed up like Slipknot dudes. Yeah. But there's me and my dark beard, not the Santa beard. My regular right. dark beard. All right, so then continue on here. There's somebody dressed in a full-on Scooby-Doo outfit. I mean, head to toe. It's like something you would wow. sleep in. Well, I, I wouldn't sleep in it, but I mean, that's what it is. Okay. It looks a little warm. Yeah, yeah. Well, Florida. And you know, that's that's, sure. I, I challenged the person to do this back in May when the, when it's coming around again, because it's going to be hot as fuck. You're, you're right. It was pretty nice out. It was sunny. Yeah. Drizzled a little bit, kept kept some of the extreme sun off us. It was nice. It was good. It was cool. Good. Let's see. How about this guy? He's got a fist bump bro shirt with Cartman and Token from South Park. He's sucking on a vape pen. He has a squid on the top of his head with the legs of the squid dropping down his sides. And he's wearing a Slipknot-type mask with a fucking 12-inch nose on it. 
Interesting. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The, I got the questions. T-shirt. You said it, it's Cartman and Token. Token. Yeah, the black the black character is called Token. It's pretty funny. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> People. Don't you watch South Park? Have you ever seen it? Oh, uh, I no, I've seen South Park. Well, that but... that character on the left of that shirt, uh, Cartman, he's like this yeah. fat kid who Lisa says yeah. was me when I was growing up, and I can see some resemblance. And he's <laughs> they're all in it. They have their group of friends, and their one friend is Kyle, who happens to be Jewish. And every right. show, Cartman's like, "Kyle, you fucking Jew," <laughs> shit like that. So <laughs> I've, I've seen the show many times, yeah, like, but like. Cool. Not in the past ten years, and I'm guessing Token is a newer character. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's been around for maybe the past ten years or so, I guess. And then um, I've seen Token. I've seen Starf and Marvin. They just got sucked up by Paramount Network. Paramount's got that streaming service, and they're coming out with some new on Thanksgiving Day. They're having some new South Park that's only exclusively available on Paramount Plus. So whatever. The that uh, is. first ever episode of, of South Park I ever saw. And I didn't even know it existed by name. Yeah. I was flipping through the channels, and it was the uh, the Mr. Hankey episode. Mm. Great Christmas songs. Mr. Hankey, yeah. the Christmas poo. Yeah. Mis- yeah. Uh, it sucks to be a Jew on Christmas. Yes! Yes! All right. Uh, yep. All right. So here's another picture of some guy. This is the beer guy with a hat that's like... Ten times bigger than the regular baseball hat on his head. So it looks like it's maybe he's wearing a construction hat in the regular beer man baseball hat. It's a black hat right. says beer man across the front. So they're just, yeah. I don't know, caught my eye. Whatever. All right, next. Here's me with one of the people from uh, Squid Games, that show on Netflix. He's handing me my invitation card to go participate in Squid Games. So I got that going for me. What else we got here? There's a dude dressed up in all-out Spider-Man, but I guess he was getting hot, so he took the mask off. But he's walking around in all-out Spider-Man get-up. And hiking boots. Interesting. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Yes, because everybody everybody knows that Spider-Man wears hiking boots. Here's one. This chick had nothing on but a bra and panties, but she had, like, a long, dark skirt on. And it's acceptable. It's Daytona. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what it is, right? All right, here we go. Here's another one. Now, I thought this was uh, Peter Griffin, Jack Black, maybe <laughs> you look closer. The guy's wearing a chicken head thing. It looks like a chicken on top of his head. Right. He's That's walking around. Seen. He's probably about 250 plus, maybe about 5'10", 250 plus pot belly walking around with no fucking shirt on. Yeah, that's more than 250, dude. <clears throat> well, you know, you can't just, you know. And the thing I had to keep reminding myself is, this is fucking Daytona. Net car fans are going to be there. You know what I mean? Because it's at Daytona. So, right. Exactly. Here we go. Here's another one. This is what you want your grandma to be wearing. On the back of her shirt, it says, stupid, dumb shit, goddamn motherfucker. Is she smoking a Marlboro in her scooter? <laughs> and hey, come here, honey. Give grandma a kiss. You know? Yeah. Make your grandkids proud. That wow. that stupid dumb shit goddamn motherfucker. That's a line from an Offspring song, by the way. Oh, okay. So, I guess it's I guess it's a concert T-shirt, licensed yeah. subscription. Yeah, licensed. Yeah. Here's some, somebody dressed up. I don't know what the hell this is. Some sort of cheetah, some sort of something with yellow hoodie, full on jumpsuit thing with yeah. It's all yeah. yellow and it's got like brown spots on it. I have no idea what the fuck it is, but it was interesting. <laughs> no clue. The guy behind him is handing out free hugs. <laughs> so I'm always suspicious on somebody that's got the free hugs thing going on. I think they're like uh, some sort of, uh, you know, maybe they're the people that show up as those little red dots on the map when you're looking in your neighborhood to find out all the sexual, <laughs> sex offenders, you know? Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, uh, it's, it screams desperation. He's probably just, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. You know, it's like if you go to a nightclub and said, hey, you want to get laid? Hey, you want to get laid? Hey, you want to get laid to every girl that you see? You do that eventually. enough around 2 o'clock, you're going to get one. Exactly. <laughs> eventually, well, someone's going to say yes. All right. So check this out. I don't know if you're familiar with Rick and Morty from Adult Swim. but uh, I that, heard of it. That's Pickle Rick, the scientist character Rick, Rick Sanchez. 
turned himself into a pickle one episode because he can. And anyway, that's who that is, Pickle Rick. I thought that was interesting. So you, you go to a concert and you you carry this pickle around with you all day. I guess I I caught him blowing it up the first time. Then I waited till it was fully blown up and he came back again and I got the shot there. So yeah, giant <laughs> blow up pickle Rick. So, okay, right. so here's the mosh pit Jesus guy surrounded by a couple dudes dressed in dresses. Okay. Now, that's the mosh pit Jesus. Now, it's not to be confused with the other Jesus I'm going to show you here in a minute. Because kind of like when you were a kid and you went to a bunch of different malls or a bunch of different places and you saw different Santas. But you never saw the two of them in the same room at the same time. Right. It's one of those type things. So, kind of like sea characters. Yeah, these dudes. One dude's dressed up like a chick maybe from Rocky Horror Picture Show in the green there with the hat on, the little tiny hat on, a tilt on his head. Another one's dressed like a uh, German waitress maybe. You might find in a German beer house or something. Your hosen. Yeah, and then there's another one dressed in a dress. I don't know. I'm not trying to analyze these dudes, but dudes in dresses was a popular thing at this show, and I was amazed. There were some Interesting. Boys- Boyfriend and girlfriends, and the dude was in a dress. And I'm like, I'm trying to figure this out, you know? <laughs> I mean, not, hey, whatever floats your boat, man. You know what I mean? It's just not me, but, hey, you wore that shit. You left the house wearing that shit. You knew I was going to take a picture. So here we are. Right. All right. Let's go another one here. See, there's Santa. There is a Santa Claus at this event. And on his shirt, it says Surfing Santa. And I thought, well, that makes sense. We're at Daytona. He lives here. And he surfs. No. This guy fucking crowd surfs. This guy looks like he's 70. No. He's dressed in his short, red shorts, red socks, red shoes, red suspenders, white shirt that says Surfing Santa. Santa hat. Has a real beard. Wearing glasses. And just about every big band, he was crowd surfing. Uh, well, he wears red, so this way when he, they drop him, he, they can't see the blood. <laughs> I was just amazed by that, dude. It was something else. So, uh, All right, here's another one. Keeping with the Christmas theme here, there's one of Santa's elves. <laughs> He's got the backside of him there. And then keeping with the Christmas theme, here's the other Jesus waving to me. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And then here we go. There's a couple more here. That's it. Here's my wife, my lovely wife, Lisa. She found Waldo. Wow, look at her. Wow, she's quick. So here I am with Waldo, getting my picture with Waldo. We found Waldo. Waldo, Waldo has some has some years on him. Yeah. He's looking a little different than he did back in the 90s. So anyway, that was pretty much the fucking uh, Rockville. Wow. It was a good time, dude. It was a really good Howard. time. The uh, I, and and like I guess it was uh, the last day they started uh, posting online the uh, the headliners for next year. Yes, I'm gonna get that was the next thing I'm getting to here. So hang on one second. We were one walking. of my. Uh, Go ahead. So one of my neighbors here <clears throat> comes out that the the Monsters of Rock cruise that I go on every year. Um, one of the people that we kind of made friends with over the year. Literally lives like five blocks from me. Really? And uh, yeah, and she was there at Rockville with you. I'm sure you you, you guys hung out and everything. Uh, no, but <laughs> she started posting as the day went on all the uh, all the the, uh, the the bands for next year. Yeah. And, like, oh! and the thing is, they're great great lineups for the for the headliners. Yeah. But I don't know if I could freaking do that, man. It's going to be May. It's going to be upper 80s. Yeah. You know, and and, and just the, the ticket price alone. And then on top of that, we have, a, you know, two kids. We'd have to figure something out with that. So it would be a logistical nightmare for, for us to go. You know, it's it's we're lucky enough that we're going to be able to get away to go on Monsters of Rock. No, I hear you. When you have kids, that's different. Or you could be one of these concert parents that brings their kid. Which, yeah. When you're going to an no. event, there's too much debauchery. There's too much shit going on for that for me. So. Yeah. Oh, look how big this picture is. I'm bringing it up. I'm going to resize it here because I forgot to add this picture. And there's ruining the surprise here is the bands that are going to be at Rockville in 2022, May 19th through the 22nd. 
Thursday night, the headliners kiss. Friday night, it's corn. Saturday night, it's Guns and Roses. And then Sunday night, closing out the festival is the Foo Fighters. So they trick. I'm guessing in. all bands that you've seen already. Oh, yeah. I've, I've seen them all. I have not seen Guns and Roses yet. Really? I've seen all the others. So, yeah. Yeah. We got. I got lucky enough. I, I decided that when they got back together and did their stadium tour, mm-hmm. <coughs> that I would uh, would do that. So I think it was a 2018 or something. They came to uh, the Alamo Dome and I saw them. Of yeah, course, the dude we, that's the lead singer reminds me a bit about uh, Vince Neil from Molly Crew because he, you know, was like blew up to like 400 pounds and sounds like shit. And I'm like, really? Now he 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 leaned back down and. Uh, you know, he sounds like Axl Rose. You yeah, know. that's his name. If, if, if him and uh, Adam Sandler walked in this room right right now, I'd know, know which one I would punch first. But uh, <laughs> not, not a fan. Well, uh, you But know, they were good. Dude, they played for three hours. Yeah. They played, like, ZZ Top opened. They played for three hours. And I was literally like, oh, my God, what the fuck else are you guys going to play? Jesus, right. stop. We're done. We're done. It, time. <laughs> and of course i've seen kiss multiple times i've seen yeah. kiss with you yeah yeah and uh we were late Cor- to a kiss show one time because i had the smart idea to buy tickets at the cigar bar where we met mel taylor from the radio station the I bought uh, extra tickets at face trying to scalp them on the way in so we were late to see ted nugent yeah yeah we we got in there just in time to see ted shoot his arrow into a target yes. and say good night and i was like okay good but we missed, <laughs> we missed Skid Row with uh, with the the other lead singer uh, was it John Salinger? That lead singer has passed away. He passed away from I think liver failure. Really? Yeah. So wow. they, they're on like they're on like lead singer number four now. Wow. Uh, that was Skid Row. But never seen Corn. Never seen Food Fighters. I'd like to see Food Fighters. Food I don't Fighters, know if I would pay. Let me tell you something. Food Fighters is one of the best fucking bands I've ever seen. And Dave Grohl. Who used to be in Nirvana, of course, and he spent some time in Queens of the Stone Age and some other projects. It's like every time I look, I'm like, how many fucking bands is this guy in? He's yeah. he's uh, uh, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I think the Foo Fighters are going in this year, but wow. he's also in with Nirvana, of course. Right. But yeah. Now he's he just seems like an all around good guy. He is, you know? and he he played a fuck out of a guitar he could sing he has that command that stage presence i've been talking about all show here he has that thing i don't know what it is i can't put my finger on it but you know it when you see it either somebody has it or they don't you know yeah and and he looks like he has fun when he's up there and he's doing his thing you know they usually bring up a fan on stage to play guitar and i'm you know i'm worried i'm wondering if that's always a plant or what because whoever he picks comes up and plays the shit out of the song Guy dressed like Kiss or a kid yeah. who's 14 or whatever. I'm like, Kiss, kiss guy. <laughs> Lisa's always like, next time we go to see them, we're going to go up front. You're going to hold up your hand because I want to see you go up there and suck at guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I can play anything. I play three chords. I play Smoke on the Water. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking crazy, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I, no, like I'm excited. It. I've already got my tickets for next year. Yeah, I, no, I've already got my hotel tickets, stay. Yeah. The price of, of tickets is just astronomical. I, I, well, not that. I get it, dude, but trust me, it's so worth it, dude. Trust me. Yeah. I mean, but, but I know it's a different genre than what you're really like, so. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I would hate to go to this concert, obviously, and, and want to see Kiss, Guns N' Roses, and Foo Fighters, and then I would just have to sit around for – seven hours for all these other bands to, to to funnel through buddy there's enough to do at this place there's enough to see there's yeah. enough things to try there's a, i got tons of footage of stuff that i'm just not even gonna put out anywhere um then on the way back on the way yeah. back on the last day on the way back we decide we're gonna have um uh lunch like some sort of seafood or something find some place to sit by the water and eat so we end up going to the ocean deck in daytona oh awesome yeah and, there are both Mike's podcast stickers all over that motherfucker now. And, and this is this would be Monday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. They're on the toilet paper holders in the women's room. They're by the mirror <laughs> in the men's room. They're by the urinals in the men's room. They're on a giant surfboard. When you come in, it's there. Um cool. So 
I'm going to post those on both mics, and that's the uh, show me where you stick it. Show me where to stick it, whatever. So you uh, send us a, uh, send me an email or hit us up on Facebook. Email Mike underscore Sofka. That's S-O-F-K-A at bothmics.com. I'll send you a sticker. Show me where you stick that sticker, and by the end of the year, whoever impresses me the most is going to get a Chris $100 bill in cash money. So, so I guess I'm in the lead with having stickers all over Nassau, Bahamas. Uh, you don't qualify, sir. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Next. Yeah. Must yeah. must be a uh, consumer of our product in order to qualify. So yeah. spread that around to all your friends. Get a, get a sticker. Doesn't cost nothing. Get a sticker. I'm going to mail you the sticker. And if you put it in a cool place and send me a photo of it, and that's the coolest one by the end of the year here, which is coming up in five weeks, six weeks. Right. Anyway, you're going to get a crisp, brand new $100 bill. Wow. How about what that? a bargain. And this show has flown by, my friend. This show has yes. uh, all Rockville show. I didn't intend it, <laughs> but I could see it heading that way. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and the Ocean Deck is cool. I, uh, we actually went there a month or two ago with the, the boys, and we, uh, we had lunch there. And, uh, God, probably 13 years ago, went to uh, Daytona for a Biketoberfest with a, an ex-girlfriend. And uh, we did karaoke. So your wife wasn't mad that you went to Daytona with your ex-girlfriend? Yeah, no, it was okay. 13 years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, the karaoke at the uh, downstairs at the Ocean Deck. Did you have a stage so, down there, inside and outside stage? The only time I've ever gotten applause after singing karaoke. Nice. What'd you sing? Yeah. You remember? Um, I sang American Idiot. Okay. Well, and, there you go. Uh, <laughs> it's an autobiographical and, uh, song. There you go. And Bowling for Soup, 1985. Oh, nice. Oh, they had yeah. you up for two songs. They must have really well, they, liked they let you. They let you sing two songs in a row. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, I guess my, my voice warmed up. Just in case you're stretching yourself yeah. on the first song, they don't want to yeah. judge you until the second one. Okay. Right. Yeah, and my mom always said that I couldn't carry a tune if it was in a bucket. Nice. Okay. You got mom's yeah. support. That's great. <laughs> hey, yep. something a little off the uh, Rockville and my trip topic. Oh, by the way, of course, on the way out there, I had to stop and fill up with cheap Bucky's gas because gas was like 339 out there by the beach. It was like 307 wow. at Bucky's, which I can't believe I'm saying, holy crap, I saved money by only paying 307. But anyway. Right. So, um,. We stopped at Bucky's and, of course, loaded up on snacks for the cool. uh, entire duration. So we'd have them, you know, got the uh, salt and pepper brand of the, uh, uh, what are those corn pop things? Beaver nuggets. Yeah. Got some of those. Got the cinnamon sugar kind as well. Got some chocolate stuff that my wife likes. Got, um, I don't know. Not I get the licorice. Bucky's. They had the red licorice. Yeah. And I picked something up a couple of weeks ago. You know how like you have an everything bagel? Yeah. And it has, you know, the the garlic, the yeah. poppy seeds, yeah. the sesame seeds, salt, pepper, blah, right. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. All on all on a bagel. Yeah. Everything cashew nuts. I saw those. I almost picked those up. I saw them. Those those are good, bro. I like bet. yeah. Too I good. Bet. Too got, good. Oh, we got some beef jerky too, of course. A couple of different of kinds of beef of jerky. And yep. um I don't know, we just had a good time. It was it was great to go, you know, get a kind of away but not too far from the house, you know. Yeah, yeah. travel and we hadn't done anything like that in a while. So it was it was good to get out. So yep. I was happy. My cheap trick show, which was scheduled for Thursday with John Fogarty, the uh pro charity thing that they were doing at the amway ended up getting canceled and i heard through the grapevine not enough ticket sales well yeah dude i i thought it was kind of weird that those two bands and they were going to book the amway and then I, then i was telling it like are they going to do half a floor you know how they they move the stage up and they put those curtains up well, well when i first heard about it like in january or february i looked into it but we were under extreme covid lockdown protocols and i wasn't going to buy a VIP ticket up front and spend all the money and then not be able to go or something like that. So I bought this time. I managed to get some good seats. I wasn't able to schedule a meet and greet or anything, unfortunately, but I was still going to go because I hadn't seen them. I missed them the last five or six times they came in the area and it was wow. just, you know, a bum ride. I don't do that. If they're, if they're within a couple hundred miles, if you've seen me, I travel five, 600 miles. I don't give a shit. I'll go see them. 
Right. But, um, yeah, it was a bit of a bummer that that happened. So it is what it is. That's strange. Yeah, I, I I couldn't see the the sales being there. John Fogarty, I don't think, you know, he's a he's a, a county fair draw. Yeah, you know? Creedence Clearwater Revival guy. I, I mean, I like him. I, I can listen to his stuff, but yeah. I don't know. They're what not going to fill up an eighteen thousand seat. Yeah, eighteen thousand yeah. seat yeah. arena. No, they need to have shit like that at the House of Blues or at Hard Rock. Yeah, something that holds yeah. like three four grand. You know, that's 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 fun. That's doable. That fills the place up. That's what you yep. want. Yeah, and then when he said it was charity, I'm like, all right, well, maybe they have the support of someone to fill it. Well, but... well that's what I thought, too, because I thought it was a charity thing. You're inviting all these people, like uh, first responders and stuff like that. It's an honor of them, and yada, yada, yada. And But come to think of it, in January or February, when I first heard of it, I didn't see yeah. or hear any advertisement. When I went back in a month ago and was able to get the exact same tickets I was looking at in fucking January or February, I knew there was a problem, but I bought them anyway. And I bought the insurance thinking, well, okay, you know, whatever, you know, in case something comes up between now and then, which was about a month ago. And, um, yeah, yeah. no, it's, they're going to refund my money. They're going to, in the next 30 days, by the way, they'll refund my money. Yeah. Ticketmaster. They'll, they'll hold my money for another 30 days. That's great. They're busy. They got things to do. So we got under three minutes to go. I do want to give a shout out to my buddy Gino Losi. Check him out if you want to go fishing. Fishing anywhere in Florida, he'll put you on a monster fish. Just go to my Facebook and stuff and YouTube. You'll see all that stuff. Hit up my friends at the uh, the theater there in Leesburg. The, the Melon Patch. Melon Patch. That's right. I'm escaping me. The Melon Patch. My friend Dustin... Uh, Levine. Dustin Levine just got married. Took his beautiful wife Ooh, to... Congratulations, uh, Dustin. To, Game uh, over. Honeymoon in New York City. It looks like they had a blast. I saw really? some pictures from it. So go Jay see a show. Go see some comedy. Go donate some money to the theater. It's a great thing. Even if you have to drive a little bit to get there. Trust me. It's small theater. It's cool. It's a great thing to go to. And these people put their heart and soul into this yeah. stuff. And they don't get paid. It's all Intimate location. Yeah, no, it's it's a wonderful thing. So, and hit me up. You can hit me up on a both mics page for this if you want. And I meant to put up the screen. I'll do it next shows, I guess. But um, I'm doing the Santa thing. If you want me to show up at your gig, your event, your festival, your house, I will show up in full regalia. I will show up with Mrs. Claus, and we will visit. Hey, hey, hey. There's also an opportunity for you to not leave your house and do a virtual visit with me as well. So hit me up on the site for that, and I'll show you more direct contact information for that in a little next couple shows here. You got anybody to shout out to, Mike? We got uh, about well, a minute. Does Does Mrs. Claus know a photographer? She does. She does know a photographer very well. Yeah, I think she's a good photographer. She yeah. is. She is. She did. She well. Like at that event that we just went to, they were real strict on what you could bring in, what you couldn't bring in as far as camera and stuff. So that right, was uh, yeah. something else. So let me turn this off here. And just like that, folks, we are out of time for show 72, right? Yep, 72. Not right. a prime number. Hey, if you're watching us live on twitch.tv slash both mics, uh, stick around. We'll be right back in a few minutes with show 73. We're going to do we'll a couple in a row here, okay? <laughs> All right, peace out. We'll see you in a bit. Yeah. Introducing the worst fucking podcast you've ever